I'm continuing my discussion of one of Magnus Carlsen's favorite strategies. If you remember, recently I showed you this game played in online rapid tournaments. So Carlsen playing white against the Iranian player Taba Tabai. And it's a Spanish, and Carlsen went for this very early bishop g5, a very provocative move. Tabatabai broke the pin here. This is quite annoying. And he broke the pin with g5. And this is exactly what Carlsen wants because he then spun his knight round to this key square e3 looking at the f5 square. This is the weakened square after g5. Tabatabai took here. Seems like well, black shouldn't have any problems here because that bishop is kind of locked out of the game. But watch what happened in this position. If you remember, Carlsen played this spectacular move. Knight h4 obviously came as a complete shock. Beautiful move. So the knight is spinning into f5. And after that, Carlsen had a great attack. Of course, if that's taken, then the bishop enters the attack with incredible force. Lovely idea, and it's all about that weakened f5 square. Now, recently I was watching the Tata Steel India Rapid and Blitz tournament played in Kolkata, and I saw this game. Now, this was played in the Rapid section. So, Pragnananda, Ramesh Babu Pragnananda, against um, Vidit, now, Prague playing very, very well at the moment. Watch what happened in this game. This is absolutely fascinating. So Prague playing white, Vidit, Gujarati playing black. Now, it's not a Spanish. It's a bishop c4, Jocker Piano. But you'll notice the pawn structure is very similar to a Spanish. The pawn's like this. And what did Prague do? He played bishop g5. So it's really similar to Carlsen's Spanish strategy. Only difference is that these pawns have an advance, but the bishop is on this diagonal. So very similar. And let's have a look at what Vidit did. Now, this pin is certainly quite annoying. So first of all, a6, well, yeah, that means the bishop can drop back here. So Vidit is waiting, um, waiting to see whether Prague commits his king. And that's exactly what he did. Prague played castles here. Now that really is an invitation for black to advance that g-pawn. That's exactly what he did once the king is committed. So we've got a really double-edged position. Now here, Vidit played bishop g4. And when I was watching the game, I was wondering, what about h5? Because this is pretty critical. When the rook is still in the corner supporting this advance, what are you going to do? At first, I thought h4. And actually, I think this should be OK for white. Um, and if that's taken, then bishop takes h4. And once again, that bishop is very dangerous on the style. But in fact, it occurred to me that this is possible as well. Um, and then you can get away with taking here and taking the rook in the corner. But OK. It, anyway, h5 isn't working, but that's something that really needs checking. Vidit played bishop g4, which looks very logical. Now h5 could be quite a serious threat. h3, clever move. Of course, Prague would be delighted to see that because then that f5 square really is weakened. So the bishop came back to h5. You can see the bishop stops h5. That's actually very useful. Also prevents knight h5. So h3 was a very clever move from Prague. Only thing is... That's a hook that gives black something to bite on. When g4 comes, then that g file is going to open. 
and that's dangerous. So there are pros and cons to this move, but overall, I think it was a good move. And this is a very cool move. Prague can't improve his situation on the king side. He starts a counterattack on the other side of the board with b4. Fascinating. I mean, to my eyes, it looks quite slow. But let's see what black is doing on the other side of the board. Oh, by the way, if black blocks that with b5, then of course white can chip away with a4. And that, and that really reminds me of the Spanish, actually. But anyway, b4 played. Rook g8. So Vidit is building up. And I like Prague's next move. Plays a very prudent move. If the rook steps in the line of the king, well, he just steps out of the way. King h1. Very prudent. Queen d7. So the queen is starting to line up here. b5. Prague continues with his strategy of just opening up the queen side. And actually, I mean, this feels so slow, but there's one very practical point, is that black is going to be discouraged from castling queenside because the b-file has opened, queen a4 could be coming. It looks too dangerous. So, very nice idea, b4, b5. Fidit decides to open with g4. So the position is becoming really sharp. You need to really switch on at this point. So Vidit recapture with the queen. I mean, all these recaptures are possible. I think it's the key thing for, for white is that that bishop is on g3. Now, very often it takes a long time for this bishop to get into the game. But actually, there is a nice square on h4 beckoning. At some point and for the moment of course it just blocks the g-file so a very important piece queen takes queen shifts over and d4 so that shuts out this bishop for the time being puts a little bit of pressure here and also well you never know d5 could be quite a serious threat pinning and there's a pin there pinning and winning with d5 so the king just stepped to the side so that's sensible. So just breaking that pin. Queen a4. Excellent move from Prague. You can see pressure on c6, but also there's a pin here too. More pin and win strategy. And here, knight takes pawn. Well, if Vidit doesn't take there, what, what's he actually... Sorry, if he doesn't take on e4, what is he actually doing? It's not clear to me. You know, these pieces protect the king pretty well. So knight takes e4. Knight takes, queen takes, and rook e1. White's pieces look very well placed. But this is just in time. You know, there are threats here. Queen steps back. c4. Queen e6. And we're reaching boiling point in this game. This is a very important position. Remember, it's rapid play. I think 15 minutes for all the moves plus, I think, 10 seconds. I could be wrong about that. I think it was 15, 10, 15 and 10. So not that much time. And this is such an important position where you have to calculate correctly. Both sides have to calculate correctly. If you don't, you can just be, you'll be crushed in this position. So... Here's your moment. I'll have a drink. You have a think. White to play. What do you do in this position? That's plenty of opportunity to go wrong here. White to play. What would you do? Well, I suppose the obvious move is d5. When I was watching, I was just going, well, d5. Wins a piece. What's going on? Black has a brilliant defence. That's not just a defence. I mean, obviously, if the queen moves over here, you can just take and, well, that's fine. That's winning for white. Queen c8 actually turns the tables completely. Very easy move to miss. This didn't happen. But let's have a look. So what's the point? Point is that the rook is now defended, meaning that this bishop 
can move away with a deadly discovered attack. Also, this is a threat. Bishop takes knight. So, well, white actually can't defend against all the threats. So pawn takes knight. Bishop takes f3. That threatens a massive check here. King h2. Bishop takes f2. Threatening the queen. White's position is completely collapsing. What an incredible turnaround after d5. Queen c8. Absolutely brilliant. So no doubt Vidit had foreseen that possibility when he was running around with the queen in the middle. Brilliant. Okay, what about pawn takes pawn? Once again, bishop takes knight is deadly. Um, threatening here. Well, if that's taken, then that's checkmate. That's an emphatic uh, end to the game. So what did Prague do? Well, he played bishop takes knight. Best move. And then took on c6 with the queen. So he's won a pawn, but more importantly, he's disturbed black here. Threatening the rook. And the queen also defends that knight. Very important. Rook e8, and then he took on e5. And you know, magically, Prague has managed to connect his queen with this side of the board. Um, but also, his pieces are beautifully coordinated, actually, on the king side. And his king is safe. After knight takes, well, what's the score? He's he's now a pawn up. And there's nothing better for Vidit than to exchange queens and go into this endgame. So Prague, a pawn up. Now, it's still a tricky position. It's very interesting to see how he played it. Knight b4. Got to watch out for those bishops, of course. They have potential. But knight b4 is a nice move. White's king very safe behind these pieces. And that knight is spinning into d5. Really like this maneuver. Combining with the bishop very nicely. Looking at c7, attacking this. And looking to fork as well. Bishop d4. Now, there's, there are so many tactics around here, it's very tricky. Um, rook b1 is a nice move, activating. Bishop b2. I mean, this, this can... Both sides have chances here, but again, I really like Prague's move. Knight f4, hitting the bishop. And this is an unusual tactic. If bishop takes pawn, then rook b4 is a very unusual tactic to win a piece. It's just a skewer, and there's actually uh, actually no way out. So knight takes bishop threatened, rook e8 defends. f3, nice move, just restricting that bishop. And again, everything is sort of very well protected, very well coordinated, and it means the king is very safe. When it comes to this square, h2. Not an easy position. Once again, bishop takes pawn, fails to rook b4. So what should black do? There's a lot of loose pieces here. You know, the king's a little bit exposed. The bishops are loose. So I understand why Vidit wanted to play this next move. Anchoring the bishop in the middle of the board. In fact, it's a terrible mistake. I mean, in fact, it's better just to move the bishop back somewhere like here. c5 seems like a sensible idea. You know, if rook b7 check, then black takes here. Now, that's exactly what black wants. Pieces are very nicely coordinated. There's potential for that pawn to advance, and I would say all bets are off in that position. But Prague doesn't panic. He plays another beautiful move doesn't take this. That could easily peter out to a draw. He keeps the tension. He plays knight d5. It's a great move. Because here, if bishop takes pawn, then there's a knight fork. And after this, it's actually a very difficult position for black. Because these pieces are going to combine to attack the king. Watch what happens. Rook h8. Well, that's just trying to get the rook out of the way. Um, 
avoiding tactics, but watch what happens. Check. And with the king on the back rank, this is absolutely fatal. Here's a nice tactic. King e8, rook e7 check. There we go. Check. And you can take the bishop. Loose pieces drop off. That's the moral of the story. Kings d8, and the game ended like this. It's another great move. Hitting the bishop, and after that moves, knight b6 check. Here's a nice checkmate. The king comes here. Bishop g3 check, and mate next move. Beautiful. So king d8, and after rook d7 check, Vidit resigned. Why? Because if king e8, rook d8 is mate. Very nice. It's interesting how, in this final position, white is able to use that bishop on h4. After g5 and g4, you know, it's these squares that are weak. Squares here on the h file and on the f file. And those are the squares that Prague used very nicely. So let's just go back and kind of recap. So once again, this move g5 was provoked. And it weakens these squares. Now, this was rather different to Carlson's game um, in that in this position it wasn't possible to occupy f5, but it meant that black was still compromised on the king side, and actually the king was in trouble. It wasn't possible to castle king side, and yeah. This this counterattack came through very nicely. You know, given given a chance, this would have been a nice maneuver at some point. But yeah, even when we got to the end game, let's get to the end game again. There were weak squares here, which Prague managed to exploit. Um, and yeah, these pawns, these split pawns, didn't help fit its cause either. I found that fascinating. Um, you know, we can add that to our um, our database of positions where g5 occurs. Um, just a, a slightly different strategy that uh, Prague employed, but b4, b5, really strong. Um, and I want to show you another game featuring Prague and a kind of similar strategy as well from the same tournament. I find it fascinating. Of course, Prague didn't think, oh, Carlson's doing that, I'm going to play the same. This is a very well-worn strategy that he's playing here, provoking g5. As I mentioned before, goes right the way back to Steinitz. Um, and no doubt earlier than that. Um, what I find interesting is that it is so common. I've played it myself, uh, this provocation, and it's well worth including in your own games. Thanks for watching.